Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Creative Techniques. In this episode, I'm going to show you what I think are the best five features of Final Cut Pro 10.4.9, which just came out. All right, the first feature I want to show you is the new proxy creation. Now, if you have been working with proxies before in Final Cut, you'll know that you could create a ProRes proxy format version of anything, which was potentially easier to work with, but might not be a whole lot smaller. Now, when you transcode media, you have another option. You can create ProRes proxy just as you used to, but you can also create an H.264. You've also got control over the frame size. So it can be half the original size, the original size, or even much, much smaller. You can also go for a specific size if you like. This means you can save significant space. So here's a clip I've prepared earlier. If we were to look at the original clip here, this is a 465 megabyte clip. Now, if we reveal the proxy media instead, you'll see this is now 43.5. Now, you might be curious as to how, what kind of data rate this is. Well, if we play the video, we'll see it's it's okay in terms of quality. I mean, it's a 1080p clip, not uh, 4K like the original was. And if we look at the original uh, data here for the file, you can see it's 1080, it's 25 frames. Uh, the data rate is about 8 megabit. Uh, so the original was 100, this is 8, this is a tenth of the size, roughly speaking. Um, it's going to save you a huge amount of space. Now, one of the other issues with proxy has been that you had to go all or nothing. You could only view the proxy media or your original optimized media, and that is no longer the case. You've got a new playback option called proxy preferred. So only some of your media needs to be in proxy format. So now this file, which I've made a proxy, will play back in proxy, and it tells me so right there. Whereas this file and all the others, which I haven't converted, will not be proxy. They'll be showing the original footage which is completely awesome. The second new feature that I'm going to show you is the new collaboration workflow, partly enabled by the new proxy workflow, but there's some other things thrown in there as well. This library, if I look at this whole library, which I've got here, I'll reveal, reveal this in the finder, I can see it is 49 gigs. So fairly sizable, not too bad. You could certainly put it on an external drive, but I wouldn't want to email it. Now, what I can do is if I've gone and made proxies of all my media, I can now copy to library and make a whole new library. So I don't have to, uh, you know, try to make take my nice internal media library home. I can just export this to a new version with proxies. So it'll make a whole new library for me and I can say just the proxies, thanks. This is awesome. So this can save you an absolutely huge amount of space. It means you can take a job home and it'll also make some collaboration workflows much, much easier. It means that you could, as the master editor, uh, make proxies of everything and send the job to somebody else if you want them to, you know, do some prep on the media or give you a rough cut so that you can finish it off later. If you've already shared the media, then you can send a library without media at all, which makes a lot of collaboration workflows just significantly easier. And this is going to really be a lot better. The third feature, pretty exciting for a few people, is Smart Conform, which will intelligently decide which part of a clip should be shown on screen, especially important if the aspect ratio of your final delivery project is different from what you've shot. Now, I've got my project here, Venice Highlights 4K V1, and the version number here is important. You put a space before the number and it can automatically increment. But there's a new command, duplicate project as. Now, this combines the project settings along with the renaming instantly. Now, it has incremented the number, but in this case, I was happy with the version and I'm just going to make a vertical version of this. So from the video submenu there, I can go to vertical, I can choose a resolution here, and it's great. You've got built-in vertical and square uh, resolution presets, as well as custom, which you can still type in any number you like if you're doing a weird resolution. Okay, but you've also got smart conform. Now, when I choose this, I'm going to say, okay, it's going to analyze, you'll get progress bar along the top, and it looks through each clip 
to figure out what's the best average spot to position these clips. So when I double click to open this up, you'll now see that it has picked the right part of each shot, focusing on the people in each shot. Now, has it done a perfect job? Well, no, you'll still need to go through and tweak. But if I, for example, look at this clip, you'll see that it has positioned in terms of X where the action was. I could tweak this further, dragging on the numbers, just like I would in any previous release. And maybe I'll choose to see a bit more of the feet in that shot. I mean, with this clip, I mean, I'm not sure if there's much I can do with this one because it's a moving clip. And maybe I want to focus more on the gondolier or maybe on the subject, or maybe this is just the wrong shot. Maybe this is just not going to work in a vertical frame. In which case I replace the clip like I normally would. But it's focused on the boat. And you can see here that it could have focused on empty space. It could have focused on, you know, the left of the shot, but it got it pretty much right. And if you play this clip, yeah, that's what I wanted. So Smart Conform is going to save you a lot of time. It, the, with the Duplicate Project as, and then the Smart Conform on top of that, it makes making a vertical or square version of your video super easy. The fourth exciting new thing which I'm going to talk about is a couple of updates to the viewer in Final Cut. Now, we've seen here already that we've got Proxy Preferred. I'm just going to flick that back to Optimizer Original. We've got some new options down here. We've got Custom Overlays. Now, you can choose a custom overlay, and you can have a whole heap of those adding up in the menu there, and then you choose to show it. So I'm going to turn it on. Here's one I've created earlier, and this just puts the YouTube control bars and a reminder of where the captions might go. And this is just a big reminder that, you know, you should be avoiding this area if you're going to use captions or if you expect your viewers might be displaying captions, and also to remember where the playback stuff might go. Now, this will be different sizes on different screens. This is just a rough indicator. And yes, there is potential for stuff around the top as well. But you've still got your title and safe zones, which probably are best to avoid too. But this is really good. It means you know where you should be avoiding placing your titles and positioning your graphics. Along with this, you've also now, now got, if we bring up the on-screen controls, you've got this option here. Now, this little option means you can see the area outside your clips. So if I was to make this clip, uh, let's say resize that and make this bigger, you can actually see the areas that you're cropping off. So when you crop your video, you actually know what's outside the frame. Now, this is especially important in the vertical video. Now, I'll need to create an overlay here which suits vertical video. This one is very much not going to do that. But if I bring up the on-screen controls here, you can see exactly what you're doing. And it means that the Smart Conform process is now much easier because you can pick exactly which is the right bit of the frame to display. And if I zoom out a little bit, you can quickly assess the job which it's done in terms of picking the right part of the frame. And the fifth feature on this list, one which a lot of people have been waiting for, is audio crossfades. So if I look at the gap between two clips, and if I play this back just listening to it, so there's quite a difference there. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just instantly fade those out? Now you can. Now it looks like nothing much has happened, but I can double click and inspect the audio, and I'll zoom right in, and you'll see that yes, it has actually faded out the audio and overlapped the audio for me automatically. So to do that manually, it was a quick double click on the audio, expand one way or the other, like that, and then to bring these fade handles back. And previously there was a command to just fade the edges of the audio down, but it wouldn't overlap them. So now, if I extend both of these clips, where are we? There we go. I'll just select them together. Uh, option T is the default shortcut if you're using the default settings, but you might need to reset your shortcuts to see that one. And now you've just got a quick built-in fade to make that go away. If you go to Preferences, then you've got the new crossfade setting there. I mean, it defaults to 0.1, which is probably fine, but if you want more or less of a fade, you can change it there. So I hope those tips helped you. If it was all a bit quick, then I've done a similar but slightly more in-depth series of videos for MacProVideo.com. 
Now, if you want to learn Final Cut Pro, uh, I've got lots of other video courses at macprovideo.com, but if you'd like to learn from a book, I've written one. It's called Final Cut Pro Efficient Editing, and it'll be available for purchase in the next couple of months. It starts from the process of shooting your video, gives you tips for how to import it, how to build a rough cut, how to finesse that rough cut using all the goodies in the magnetic timeline, and then how to do all your serious post effects, so color and video effects, audio effects, retiming, how to add captions, and then how to export in lots of different ways. I've had a lot of fun writing it. It's a pretty comprehensive way to go, and I really hope you enjoy it. All right. Hope all that helps, and I'll see you soon.